Okay, you are about ready to take your first exam in this course. We're going to give you a little trick in case you're ever scared of tests. Uh, this trick is a way to get your brain to come up with the information when the, the books are not around. And here's what it's called a visual chart. Now, a visual chart uh, goes off of the basis that you have not learned something until you have actually produced that material. And here's some background from Brother Rich on why they are so important to make before you take a test. We're going to just briefly talk about why we make visual charts. Visual charts are an invaluable tool to preparing to take tests and exams in math and the sciences. Uh, a lot of study has been done uh, showing why this uh, sheet of paper is so critical to your success. The first thing that I want to share with all of you is that we work hard, we learn concepts in a chapter on math, we learn them one at a time, we do the homework, we feel like we understand it, and we say, hey, I'm ready to take an exam. And then you go and you take the exam and you don't do so well. Um, that is often due to the fact that some time has to be allotted specifically to prepare for taking your test. You can't just assume that because you've done all the homework and you understand the concepts that you are now ready to take the test. I like to say that up here we have brain matter, okay, or brain stuff, okay, and that stuff is unorganized. It's all over the place. And you need to get all that stuff that you've learned and organize it into one small, concise area. And this is your visual chart. Okay, so one of the principles is that our brain is unorganized and we are responsible to organize that information. Okay, so if you had um, six sections or eight sections in a chapter that you covered, you could take this and you could break it up into you know, eight boxes for each section of homework that you did. The next thing uh, that's so critical is why the visual chart is only to be done on one sheet of paper and why it should only be done on one side of that paper, okay? Um, every human being, okay, I want you to close your eyes. Just, just do this with me. Close your eyes. Come on. No cheating. Close your eyes. Okay. Now, while you have your eyes closed, keep them closed, I want you to tell me what color was my tie? What color was my shirt? What color is my hair? Describe my tie. Okay. Do I have a belt on? What color is it? Okay. Open your eyes. Everybody, every human being, has visual memory. You can close your eyes and you can remember things that you just recently saw. A lot of studies have been done where we will take a textbook and we'll give students a single page of a textbook. Give them a couple of minutes to look at everything on that page and then ask them to recall from memory everything they can that they saw on that one page. And oftentimes students can bring to their memory most of what they saw. But then what we'll do is we'll take the same group of students and we'll turn the page and have them look at another page of information and they can't remember as much that they saw on that first page. So what we're basically saying is everybody has visual memory but as we start having more information placed upon that memory it gets more disorganized and we can't recall it as well. The visual chart is that we have one visual that we can look at and we can focus on and we can practice problems from and look at and then when we take our test, in our mind's eye, we can still see and visualize, just like when we closed our eyes, things that we reviewed for that test. There is a philosophy that I personally call authorship is ownership. Um, when we write things down, okay, we are, in essence, um, using our powers of 
creation. If you write something down right now, even if it's a scribble, uh, that didn't exist in the world until you just wrote it down right now. It's very powerful. Writing is a powerful, creative tool. And it leaves an indelible imprint on the brain. So when you take things you've learned and you reorganize them and write them all down, okay, you begin to own that information and you can recall it to your memory better than just having it up here. Okay, Really important. So, first of all, we are organizing our brain. Second of all is we are creating a visual memory. And then the third principle is that um, we want to own uh, this information and be able to recall it in our time of need. And by writing, we create um, some ownership of that information. What should go uh, in these boxes? You know, if we were to magnify a big box here and, and write some things in it, well, if we learned about order of operation, okay, we would write down our four steps to the order of operations. We know that we do parentheses first and exponents next. We multiply or divide. We add or subtract. Now, I've written that in shorthand because we have a limited amount of space here. You can expound upon this, but you must understand everything that you've written down so you can recall it to your memory. If A or S doesn't mean anything to you, then don't write that. Fully write it out. Addition or, you know, subtraction. Okay. And then, so what we do in these is, one, we write our step-by-step as we've learned, developmental processes. Okay, the how to do problems. And two, we write examples. Other things that should go in our visual charts, definitions. Okay, and formulas that you have been given to help you with problems. And so, in a problem like this, we might take, you know, uh, 3 plus 5 plus 2 squared, uh, you know, minus 7, uh, plus 7 minus 4, you know, times 1. And then we need to do the whole problem on here, one step at a time, very organized. So you can come down here and you can have 8 and plus 2 squared and plus 7 minus 4. And then you can do the exponent, 4 plus 7 minus 4. And 8 plus 4 is 12 plus 7 minus 4. And 19 minus 4 and get 15. And you show some examples. And you should have multiple examples. And you want to take examples that are difficult, that caused you to think, or that were extra hard when you did your homework. A lot of studies uh, show that students who make visual charts are tempted at times to cheat and use these. And again, we encourage you to be on your honor and uh, to not utilize these in a way that they're not intended to be used. They're intended to help you solidify your knowledge. Again, take unorganized information. You've learned all kinds of principles. Okay. Put them down on paper so that you can see them concisely in one small area. Okay. Two, create a visual memory as you make this visual chart. Utilize it in your studying for your examination. Utilize it as you do practice problems so that you can remember where things are when, you are, when this paper is not present for you. And then it will help you own this information or recall it in your time of need. But once again, we encourage you to make these visual charts. It is a fantastic way to prepare for examinations and also encourage you to be on your honor and to not utilize them in any way that would be inappropriate. All right, thanks, Brother Rich. And now we'll go through a little bit more detailed walkthrough and give you some more ideas of what you're going to put on your two visual charts. You'll be making one for decimals and one for fractions in preparation for exam one. And you think of all the things that you can do with decimals now. You can add and subtract them. You can multiply them. You can divide them. You can change them into a percent. You can change them into a fraction. Um, what else can we do with them? That's a good start. One, two, three, four, five. If 
we use these, we have six of them. And you divide it up and you say, OK, I now have six things. Everything I ever wanted to know about adding decimals goes in this little box right here. Uh, the first thing you're going to do is line up the decimal. What's the second thing you do? Start adding in columns. Uh, you might want to fill out zeros if, if you have those. But then you add columns, and then you carry by tens. Okay, So you write down everything that happens so you get adding decimals. And then you put examples, particularly if you had difficult examples somewhere in the problem set. that. Problems that really gave you a tough time. You take those examples and you highlight them in a different color, like that. And you make this entire sheet. Over here, you've got subtraction. And here, multiplication. Here's division. Here's how you change something to a percent. You know, you're going to be talking about moving it two, dec two decimal places, to the right or to the left, depending on which way you're going. How do you make them into a fraction? Like if you have 0.7. Well, 7 is in the tenths column, so that becomes 7 tenths. So you're going to fill up this whole sheet, and it's going to have cute little, oh, wow, look at that problem. That's important. Ooh, underline that. Circle that. So you're, this is going to become your representation of everything you know about decimals. And that's what's so important. When you have produced this, that's when you have learned it, not before. You'll make one for decimals. Then we're also going to make one for and if you don't want to title them all visual chart, you don't have to. If you want to save more room for what you have, fractions. And again, you're going to, OK, how do you add it? How do you add fractions? Remember when we had something like 3 and 5 eighths plus 17 and 3 fourths. Think about doing that problem. Write down all of the steps. Well. First of all, we have to have common denominators so we can do that. So yeah, you'll take this and you'll say, OK, 3 fourths, that's the same as 6 eighths. Good, so this is the eighths column. So now we have 5 eighths plus 6 eighths is 11 eighths. Aha, 11 eighths, that's more than 1. So this is going to be 1 and 3 eighths. So you now have 4 plus 7 is 11, carry the 1, 2. You get 21 and 3 eighths. Now, you may have to write down each of those steps. How do we know to carry by taking eight of these and go over there? Those are the steps you're going to write down. Highlight this example. And then you fill it out and you have subtraction, multiplication, division. How do you change it into a percent? Um, that's probably very similar to how you'll do a decimal. Um, you fill these pages out. And you may not be able to use them on this particular exam. But we will allow you to take them into the final exam of the course, where you take in these charts, so make them really nice. So you can always refer back to them. And they become your own little math book. And that'll help you when you get into a test and you're struggling and you're, you have this anxiety and your brain just sort of freezes. You now have a reference point to be able to help you through those tests.